Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D hyphen oracle, O R C L E dot com. That's Ord hyphen oracle dot com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, we can we can start with the S and P's, or we're going to start with gold. I'm good wherever you want to go, man. Um, let's, let's look at gold because I think something important is happening here. Okay, cool. Um, um, I think on the bigger time frames, this this kind of, everything's kind of lining up. So we'll, we'll just look through it. Okay. Lay out chart number one uh, is the uh, yeah is the weekly inflation deflation ratio. And uh, so I put a ratio on it, then I put an RSI on it, which is the top window. Okay. And anyhow, when, when that inflation-deflation ratio, which is the second window down from the top, the top window is the RSI for that ratio. And anyhow, when it gets down below 30 and turns up, it's been a bottom, and this chart goes back to 2015 or some 16. But, you know, that's... Uh, I, mean, I have red circles on the, the chart. The bottom window is GDX, next window up is the XAU. Yeah. I really want to point out here, we did give a buy signal, I think, back in, uh, I think it was March, probably mid-March, I don't have the exact date, but anyhow, the RSI got down below 30 and turned up, so that's a buy signal. But what I want to point out, I have some, let's look at XAU first, which is okay. the second window up from the bottom. Yes. And I got kind of bold circles there. I see that, yep, the bold one, yep. Right. The only reason why I want to point that out, because pretty much that made a double bottom. When the signal was generated oh, back I see. in 2016, yes. you got a buy signal, then that, the market didn't do anything, then right. you got another one, then finally the market then took, it took off. off. And, and when you're looking yeah. at these folks, you'll see Tim bolded that, those circles much bigger. Yeah, cool, man. I got, I got it. So, yeah. Right. Well, you know, on, on XAU, that was approximately, it was a, it was a double buy at about six months apart, or four or five months apart. Okay. But it came pretty close to the same price. Now, if you go into 2018 and 19, the next bold uh, circle there, you kind of same thing happened. You got a bicycle pretty close to the same levels. Yes. And uh, it was a little bit lower, or the second bicycle was a little bit higher, but pretty close to the same level. And again, you go in the current time frame, we got a bicycle back, I think it was like October, then you got another one in March, about six months apart again. And pretty much came at the same price again. Right. And if you look at the, the prices, okay, so that's like double bottoms there. And the one off the 16th low, that was a mega rally. I mean, it took off and never looked back. Right. It didn't last real long. Uh, it went for, you know, a good six months or something. And then the one in 2018, 2019, that kind of double bottom uh, there at the same price, that little rally lasted, you know, close to uh, you know, a year and a half, two years. Uh, so now you got a, another double buy, pretty much the same price level. So either, you know, we don't have enough, uh, you know, if we had 20 different examples, we don't. We only have three examples. But, you know, either we're going to rock it, keep going up like we do in 2016, or it's going to be extended rally, something similar to what happened in 2019. You know, you know just an observation. But either way, we're at a buy signal. So I'm just trying to get conclusions going forward how big this rally is going to be. Yes. So this is just a hint of what could happen. It's not saying it's going to happen. So let's, let's look on further here. And you know, uh, you know we also have, I mean, when you really dig into this, folks, what you're going to see, and this rally here, Tim, we've had many more signs of strength. I got the charts yeah, up, yeah. To, and I just remember that that market. I mean, it, it was that was almost a stealth one, the one, you know, the... The, the one prior to this one, actually, which is kind of wild. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So let's let's uh, flip to uh, chart. Uh, we're going to uh, yeah, flip to chart four. Okay. You know, this is uh, just cycles for gold. Gold's really pretty good at cycling. Okay. And anyhow, I got a, uh, I got a uh, 16 year and eight year cycle. Uh, so I could took it back further. It's a little bit messy that the software I use to do quite um, ideally here. But anyhow, I gave a major uh, uh, buy signal when both the eight day, uh, the eight year, and sixteen year bottom back in in two thousand sixteen, and uh, the market went up. And and now we got the eight year bottom here just in 
uh, looks like late 2023. And so that this is on gold. Yes. So uh, we're in that cycle. And and I got some blue circles on there uh, on the cycle to, to identify the mid-cycle uh, of the eight-year cycle. So I got okay. the blue circles on there. Yeah. So anyhow, the, the eight-year cycle, um, now there's four years later, it, pe- it peaked on the eight-year cycle. That's that blue circle I got back in 2012. Okay, I see it, yes. It might, yep. Yeah, okay, then, then 2020, there's a blue circle again. Yeah. That's a halfway point of the uh, red circle, the eight-year cycle. Right. So, you know, if this thing goes another four years, it'll be August 2027. Oh, point. <laughs> we go another so, four years, man. <laughs> That's going to be some yeah, fun. <laughs> so, so anyway, but they, they peak out at the uh, half cycle of the red, the eight-year cycle. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so anyway, I want to point that out. That's a possibility. So, because I'm thinking we're, we're we're doing something on the bigger time frames here, not the smaller time frames. No, you can see and, it. You can see it in the whole commodity complex, actually, which is pretty wild. I mean, you know, this is yeah, this. And, and, you know, you know, this market's been terrible. Yeah, uh, for you know, for for a while now, and so we're we're needing something other than uh, terrible. You know, so, it's you know, uh, anyhow, if, yeah, yeah. It, it's, so yeah, let's go to chart uh, two. Okay, kind of skipping over, here, but and this is uh, where we are right now. Anyhow, the second window down from the top is the bullish percent index for the gold miners index, and I don't know how many stocks are in that, but anyhow. What it, what it measures is the, the percent of stocks. Is, it, is that the music coming yep. on? Yeah, that's all right. Just, just stay right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. Uh, we have the Dow Industrials right now trading down 76. Nasdaq's up 14. S&Ps are off 6. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim or Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate the growl and a problem with us out here. And, you know, Tim, when you, you were saying that, you know, you feel like, like something's happening with gold, it is pretty amazing. I mean, in the last two months, the physical contract is up 15%. I mean, the equities are up beyond belief. So it's pretty wild that we have something like this right now and that a very it may be the beginning of the move, right? Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're still early in the move. I can, uh, as we go along, um, actually, let's, let's flip to chart. Three. No, I know because I'm keeping track of your that that monthly one that that right. we don't have that signal right. yet. And this is really cool, folks. If you've been following Tim and myself, I mean, <laughs> you know, this monthly one is, is a monster and it hasn't hit yet. So that's really cool, man. Yeah. Right. But here, uh, let's go to three because this is a weekly. Okay, I have it. It's the same thing. You know, you got a daily, weekly, and a monthly. You know, the the ones. Uh, this is the daily, or this is the weekly one. Yes. And the the, the weekly is going to have to fire before the monthly has to fire. Right. But this is right at the money. Uh, the bottom window is the weekly cumulative advanced decline for GDX. Okay. And it's just uh, I got a circle there, and it's, the, the signal comes when it closes above the mid Bollinger Band. It doesn't try to pick out the bottoms. Right. But what it does catches the trend. And so and usually once it gets on a bicycle it stays there for months, if not years. And same with the cell signal. This thing gave a cell signal back in two thousand twenty one on the weekly and we're finally now getting back to that mid Bollinger band. And I think uh on the next one the bottom window is the up down volume. The second one up is advanced decline. And we're right smack at that buy signal right now as we're talking. So this is still, you know, even though the market's rallied really good over the last couple of months, you know, if this thing kicks in, you know, the previous signals of this uh, on the weekly time frame were, uh, you know, I'm eyeballing it here. It looks at a minimum is a year. Yes. So if this triggers, this is at least a year. And for the month trigger, I, I didn't put the monthly in because, it hasn't it hasn't generated a signal yet, but I thought this was close enough to show that the weekly signal. So, um, and if this rally continues, and I think will the reason why, if you look at the top window there, yes, it, I think this is a head and shoulders bottom where the October low of 2022 is ahead, and we're we're attacking the neckline right now. You know, you can actually say we're above it, but normally. 
It doesn't stop. If it's going to stop the neckline, it's going to do more consolidation. But you need a sign of strength through a trend line to confirm the breakout. And I'm thinking we're doing the sign of strength right now on um, GDX. And it's probably going to go through this sign of strength or through this neckline. And it's going to at least last another month and not a couple of months. I think there are some other indicators I had that the current rally could last into uh, September time frame. I mean, you, not every day is going to be an up day, but in general, this impulse wave's going on right now is going to keep going. Yeah, and we definitely so have more players in the marketplace because if you look at the futures market, we're averaging 280,000 contracts a day. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't happen yeah. in, the, in the gold market. The gold market not only does about 110 to 125,000 contracts, folks, and we've been averaging this for a good, you know, couple months now, so... Well, actually, yeah. if the, you know, which, which, which is exactly what you need, particularly coming up to those lines, which is so cool. Right? Yeah, you, you need you need increased volume, and you need a wide price spread. Yes. And so we're we're, we're attacking that what I drew there a neckline, and I'm thinking the sign of strength is going on right now. So I'm thinking a couple of weeks from now, since this is a weekly chart, or maybe you know Friday you might close above it, but normally they don't whip. Up above that mid Bollinger band and whip back down and give you a kind of false signal throughout the, you know, the decline or the advance. It gets below the, you know, or it gets above the line and usually just stays there. So it's it's momentum indicator. So it's as as we go forward, you know, momentum is going to be an important thing. So yes, this is a good indicator to watch for momentum. It's not great for picking highs and lows because it's usually late. You know, getting out at the top, but when it turns down, you better not be long. I'll put it that way. You better no. I, I listen, man. When you showed us how long that now what we're talking to folks is that we're talking about the signal that we're waiting for right now on the weekly and monthly basis, meaning for the Bollinger Band to get into the middle, uh, because when Tim showed us how long one has been on a sell signal <laughs> and that sell signal was so correct it's amazing <laughs> jesus yeah 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 it got and it was pretty much you know garbage market since 2021 right because the advanced decline was crappy and the up down volume was crappy yeah so you know, even though stocks bounced they didn't bounce much they just basically uh went up and came right back down again so i'm thinking they're going to bounce this time and actually stay up and consolidate <laughs> hit a higher high, you know, consolidate, hit a higher high. So I think that's what's going to come uh, come from us. Yeah, um, well, at this particular point, so. we haven't, you know, you've only gone for about a month and a half. You might have went down two days <laughs> for the equities and then go sideways and go higher again. Sideways, go higher again. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I, I was, I'm not an Elliott Wave pattern here, but I'm thinking... This is probably a wave three right now. Then we'll probably hit a wave four probably in the next you know month or so. You know, kind of goes sideways, and I, you know, I think the wave five. I had to get into that stuff. We don't have pictures of it, but so we'll wait for another time. But let's look, let's look at chart two. Okay. Uh, this this is a, the the second window down from the top is the bullish percent index for the gold miners index. Right. What this chart does measures the percent of stocks. There are point and figure buy signals. Okay. So all the stocks in the gold miners index, seventy, uh, the current price is about seventy five percent. Seventy five percent of those stocks in the gold miners index are on point and figure buy signals. So that's usually a good area. So I got kind of a green area going across there. This chart goes back to I see it. 2008 or something and that's kind of a you want to be you know, above 60 but below 90 you start getting above 90 and I got that pointed in red I see that yeah and uh, yeah, or actually it's 95 and all those came at tops so that's great to know everything's making money all at the same time it's usually not a good sign <laughs> no <laughs> no let's point. just talk about this for a second because this is so with when you're looking at this chart folks this is what's really important to understand this is a point and figure when it gets over 75%, okay? Now, a point and figure also is late to the party. So this is pretty cool, Tim, because that's showing that, well, I, I don't mean late to the party, but the, the, the signals are later, let's put it that way. But this is really bullish because it takes a while for a point and figure folks to get bullish and or bearish, either way. 
So Great. that is really cool, Tim. I'm digging it. And I'm digging that 95% up the other side, too. Yeah. Yeah. So well, anyhow, that blue section on the bottom, everything it gets down below 5%. In other words, when everybody's heck out the door, you know, you should basically step in. And I, I pointed those uh, things yes. out. But, so, you know, but if we can stay anywhere from above 60 and below 90, you know, um, then you know we got a virtually a strong market. So I'm thinking it's, it's really now to be be in the gold market, even though they gave some kind of rough signals over the last year, year and a half. You know, um, I hear the music again. That's it. Just stay right so, there, folks. Tim and I come right back. We get the Dow down 106, Nasdaq up four, S and P's down eight and a half. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us. I get chat number two up right now, Tim. Yeah, let's actually go to chart five. Okay. This is a, this is this is a real important chart. It looks at the bigger time frames. We showed this chart on your last show. Yes. And um, the middle window is a monthly XAU gold chart. It goes back to like 1984. And I got circled, or not, I got squared out where the current price is right now. It's point oh five nine, and the line is, you know, I, I try to draw as carefully as I can. The line's around point oh six. Nice. And so, so we're, we're right there we're at that trend line, but it can be off, you know, point oh. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, we're there, and if this rally continues, it's going to push that that uh, XAU gold ratio most likely through that line. Maybe we'll get it so tomorrow. I don't see any, yep. Yeah. So I don't see any top in the XAU other than a minor consolidation. Yes. Over the next maybe month or so. There's no, like, top of any consequence here. So I'm thinking this line is going to get broken here, you know, really, really soon. You know, this month, if not this month, probably next month. And that trend line has been going down for the last 20, well, actually 30 years. And so this, if this ratio starts to turn line. up, yep. it would be a huge boon uh, to the gold stocks. You know, gold itself, too, but probably gold stocks. Sure. So, and the longer and the line, folks, that's why Tim you know, would... Look at the bottom window there, I guess, yeah. broke out. So I, I wanted to point that out. And the reason Tim so, was bringing up that line, folks, the longer that the line is, the better, if this breaks, topside, meaning then hold on for the ride, man, because <laughs> that's about as good as you can get. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, this is as good as it's, it's going to get probably in our lifetime, because right. this setup... It'll probably be another 30 years for something like this sets up again. Yeah, That's exactly. This re listen, then, this reminds me of the beginning of our relationship when gold was 282 and that line... Yep. Going across flat at the bottom. Do you know what I mean? Because right. that's that's what yeah, it was. We yeah. Listen, Tim, you days. have a great one, a safe one. We look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Appreciate Talk all the then. education, man. Folks, have a right. great night, safe night. Come back and visit uh, Jacob. Uh, Tommy's off for the week. Jacob will be in tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.